We don't need more kindness and compassion in the world. Actually, what we need more of is logic and critical thinking to detach ourselves emotionally in order to arrive at solutions objectively. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to make it very clear as to what I think is one of the major problems with humanity at the moment. That if we want to bring about a better world with less problems, we have to think along scientific lines and to apply the scientific method in everything that we do. Science is the way forward. The world is still too obsessed with ethics and morality. And that type of thinking, which is rooted in emotional reactiveness, is never going to allow us to realize the right type of solutions for our problems. So a few months ago, a gunman opened fire and killed a few people in the New York City subway. And I had friends and family from outside of state reach out to me to see if I was doing all right. Well, going by that perspective, statistically, you are far more likely to die from a car accident than from a mass shooting. And that's the central point. We often get caught up in the sensationalism and intensity of a given situation without giving the same respect, consideration, and gravity to a more pressing problem. Accidents and heart disease are less shocking and attention-grabbing than a sudden act of violence, and they happen out of sight from the mainstream media. But statistically, they kill far more people. And that is my point. We need to respect statistical information and long-term data in order to arrive at the right conclusions regarding society. And by the way, there is absolutely zero reason for anyone in the 21st century to die from a car accident or even premature death from heart disease. We have the solutions to never have to worry about these things again. But in order to find the right solutions, we need to first become aware of what we have been doing wrong for thousands of years. And this is the topic of today's video. If you want to change the world, it all starts with the way you think. Call it Sustainability 101. Humanity needs a unified global mindset that is in line with scientific principles as well as what nature demands from us. If we not only want to survive in the 21st century, but to collectively thrive as one human family. I'm sure anyone who pays attention to what's going on in the world knows that we have a lot of problems to deal with. From climate change, species extinctions, pollution and resource overshoot, to war, economic inequality, social unrest, and a general decline in mental health, there's a laundry list of crises for us to be concerned about. And again, the main issue as I see it with the world right now is a lack of an ability to respect and understand statistics and large-scale information. And by large-scale information, I mean data that has been collected and compiled from long-term scientific studies. This is the only way we can fully understand and comprehend the complex and ever-changing world that we live in. We humans have lived on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years, and we have survived by relying on our five senses. This five-sense reality is what has enabled us to find food with our eyes, hear danger when it comes our way, or to smell if something is toxic and not to be eaten. And we adapted to the world through these senses just like any other animal. But we have also been able to pass on non-genetic information such as culture and data with the development of language and writing. The creation of language was one of the great leaps in our social evolution because that is what sets us apart from the animal kingdom. Our ability to create tools and other inventions. I mean, a bird can build a nest but it's nothing compared to a combustion engine that allows for a multi-ton object to carry hundreds of people in the air for thousands of miles. We humans have the ability to drastically alter the world around us. Nature does not have an intention. It simply unfolds like a never-ending algorithm and nature never intended for there to exist a creature that can create things on the level, scale, and complexity as humans do. And the amazing world we see around us is a testament to our curiosity and ingenuity as a species. But sadly, we have become lost in all of this complexity and we need to get back to the foundation and rethink what this all means. And if there is one thing that is the source of all human progress and achievement, allowing us to better understand nature and reality itself, 
That is the process of science. The scientific method of collecting data over long term, forming theories and testing things out properly. This process is the single most important thing that we have ever been lucky to come across. The discovery of science is what has enabled us to transcend our Stone Age thinking and to overcome the brutal scarcity that is so prevalent in the natural world. And so we need to give more credit to the scientific method. But when it comes to our social and economic institutions and traditions, we have stubbornly refused to apply the scientific method. We can't even speak to each other with an objective language. Most things we say to others are lost during translation and we need to develop a language that is not subject to interpretation. And this is why there are so many unresolved arguments among people, couples, politicians, and everything else is dominated by subjectivity and the very foolish notion that everyone has a right to their own opinion. Instead of the better idea that everyone should have access to information, there needs to be a science of communication so that we can more effectively relay important information to one another and we must take the next step in our evolution to apply science to society itself. The same way we use scientific principles to build a house and a car, we have to place that same method of testing and proper observation to building a better society, a sustainable one that does not come close to destroying itself constantly. And I really think a very big part of positive change requires the population to have some form of scientific literacy, from being able to produce more food, to building adequate shelter, to inventing medicines that can protect us from disease, to even improving our understandings about one another, about what a human being is as a biopsychosocial organism. Science is that candle in the dark that can show us what type of social environment we need to create so that we reduce conflict and live in peace and harmony with one another. Deprivation is the root source of most crime. So the solution would not be to preach about kindness and compassion when we don't even touch upon an economic system that requires inequality and deprivation to function. I mean, what good are all the moral virtues espoused by the world's religions if none of them demand for us to change the social precondition and the environment in which we live? Capitalism reinforces artificial scarcity, and it also reinforces inequality. As the study from the mathematical department of Tufts University has shown, the end result of any market capitalist economy is vast inequity, where everyone is left with nothing and one player has all the money. So you mean to tell me that we should do absolutely nothing to alter the design of this terribly ineffective system and yet just obsess over being kind and honest to one another, even when the system demands the exact opposite of it in order to succeed? Would it not be better if we simply organize our society and economy as a whole so that people's needs would be met in an intelligent and sustainable manner to ensure a high standard of living without all the baggage that comes with competition and infinite growth? What is actually very bizarre to me is how there is rarely any mention, if at all, of human needs in the economic textbooks of today. If we want to create a better world for ourselves and future generations, we need to change everything. As I mentioned in a previous video, the Matrix is not some dystopian future where robots control our lives. The Matrix is the value system sickness and the system of social control which is perpetuating the unsustainable reality we see before us. 
of the self-appointed guardian who dismisses and shuts down others who are trying to expose the failures of our capitalist hierarchy. And the true danger is that the false and distorted values being perpetuated by our society and economy are not being recognized by the vast majority of people, the same way that cancer cells go unnoticed by a body's immune system. Instead of a Manhattan Project on how to build weapons of mass destruction, we need a new Manhattan Project, an all-out global effort to enhance the lives of men, to build a society that is worthy of humankind. So what we need to do is reset back to the life ground, to a proven life-supporting set of understandings that truly have no cultural relativism. And I think the idea of one human family sharing one planetary habitat is a good place to start from. So, let's go. We need a quantum departure, a quantum leap in social evolution. If I can bring this very simple understanding into reality for most people, I've done more, more than I can possibly wish as a human being. No one there to raise them if you did. And all the science I don't understand is just my job. 